my name is Ricky Malbranch. I am in my fifth year of study at Mount St. Mary's, uh, which for me puts me at third theology. And uh, please God, I uh, will soon be a deacon for the Diocese of Arlington. Thank you, Ricky. Could you tell us just a little bit about what it's like being in seminary? Seminary is like living with the family you didn't choose. And you love them and God works through them in ways that you would have never imagined for yourself. But because we are all going to the same goal, there is a certain beauty in um, the like normal life dysfunction of living with people that you would have never chosen to live with, but those that um, you wouldn't have chosen because they're at a higher level spiritually, they call you forward. And those that you wouldn't have chosen because they may annoy you like a younger sibling, you love them just like that. And so I think it, it, it's funny how God in a academic environment has brought so many personalities um, to live with and be one giant community, family. What do you look forward to most about the priesthood? Um, I mean, if you don't look forward to celebrating mass and transubstantiation with the Eucharist and converting the, the, the bread and wine to the body and blood of Jesus Christ, you're not supposed to be a priest. So beyond that, I just think confession is gonna be awesome. And it's a, I'm learning the responsibility, but I can't wait to preach. I cannot wait to preach. I think that's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm excited for those two specifically. What is the most important thing, at least in your mind, that you learned at the Mount? Off the top of my head, that brokenness is okay. That the Lord knew who he was calling knew what he called you for and where i thought my brokenness would be an obstacle it's actually the part where i could see the lord using me to heal others because i've gone through things i've experienced things that because of those experiences when somebody says something to me I'm like, oh, i know exactly how you feel and can meet them with true empathy and hopefully uh, the Lord's mercy comes through that. Do you have a favorite Bible passage? So Bible passages for me kind of come in seasons. And so this season's Bible passage, uh, I would probably say comes from the letter to, from James. Um, chapter 3, I'm going to say verse 5, feeling good about that, um, where he talks about the tongue as a fire. And it's on my mind connected to um, my desire to preach is just like you can think of fire as so destructive um, when you see like the wildfires in different parts of the country and the world. But fire really modifies whatever it touches. Like it can cook food, it can warm people. I mean, it just changes sand to glass. There's so much power. And so the thought that the tongue has that kind of power, it, it's really been sitting with me um, when it comes to what I'm doing with, with preaching. And then, remembering my tongue still works even not preaching. So uh, what I'm doing with um, just my conversations with people I don't know do now. So yeah, James 3. Do you have a favorite prayer to pray? I don't know that I have ever thought about like ranking my prayers. Um, to say I have a favorite. I mean, my go-to is the Hail Mary. Um, do you have a favorite food? Ah, favorite mm -hmm. food. I do have a favorite food. Um, I would say, <laughs> simple, simple level, I love pizza. I'm such a big fan of pizza. Um, higher end, I had one time a good cordon bleu. If I get that, that version of it again, that's, that's on top. Yeah. That's on top. Yes. Do you have a favorite activity? I love soccer. Uh, that's a good time. Um, when nobody can see, I love to sing and dance. Um, that's a great time. We got to get the headphones on, dancing around. Uh, yeah, I love that. Um, something more substantial? No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got. That's what I got. All right. Who are you most grateful for? I mean, I have to, 
I'd have to like pick out each individual member of my family. Like my dad, my mom, my brother, and my sister have each individually impacted my life in in in, in, in so many ways. Um, so I obviously thank my parents first for having raised us. Did my sister's my godmother, um, and she was like a second mother in a lot of ways. Uh, and then my brother was who because uh, just how the family fell and by age. He's who I emulated the most in my life. I um, wanted to be like him growing up, and uh, and and I think that combination. Uh, I'm very grateful the Lord gave me who He gave me as my family. If you could tell the world one thing, mm. what would it be? Mm. I think I would tell them what. I told myself because of formation, um, your brokenness is okay. God wants it and God will use it. And if every person has brokenness in their lives and God calls every person to holiness, then God obviously has a plan for that brokenness. And how God will use that plan when we offer it to him, when we go to him at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, my brokenness is yours, right? help me. I just feel like there's just a smile on the Lord's face and say, I would love to. Now watch what I do with it. One last question. How can people watching pray for you? I, I ask genuinely for humility that I, um, like I, I'm really confident in my ability to speak. And that makes me fear that I will use this, this, this um, tongue of fire for my own purposes. And so I, I beg, I beg the Lord that he will always guide everything I say, that I may always be creating perfect images of him um, through what I say. And that I have many years of an awesome future.